Florida in just under 17 minutes from now. Today's mission marks SpaceX's 10th mission of 2024 and second mission headed to the International Space Station so far this year. Thanks for tuning in to today's coverage of NG20, Northrop Grumman's 20th resupply mission to the orbiting laboratory. I'm Jesse Anderson, a manufacturing engineering manager here at SpaceX. Since 2012, SpaceX's Falcon 9 rocket has supported operations on the International Space Station, delivering critical science hardware and supplies to crew aboard the space station with the use of our Dragon crew and cargo vehicles. And today, for Thanks the first for time... And today, for the first time, we have a new spacecraft on board Falcon 9 with the same purpose in mind. We are excited to be launching Cygnus to low Earth orbit on its 20th resupply mission to the International Space Station. This is the first Falcon 9 launch of Cygnus this year. As part of NASA's commercial resupply services contract, SpaceX and Northrop Grumman offer safe, reliable, and cost-effective transportation to and from the International Space Station. Now, in fact, Dragon and Cygnus are currently the only two operational U.S. cargo supply vehicles capable of supporting station activities, and Falcon 9 is the only U.S. launch vehicle in operation capable of delivering these spacecraft to low Earth orbit. The teams here at SpaceX are proud to provide these services, with ultimately, which ultimately further our goal of one day making life multiplanetary. Now at T minus 15 minutes and 30 seconds, all is looking good for an on-time launch. The vehicle and payload are healthy. The range is ready to support and weather looks great there in Florida. As you might imagine, the crew on board the space station is preparing for their upcoming delivery. For more on those preparations, NASA's Rob Navius. Rob? Well, thank you, Jesse, and good day to everyone from Mission Control in Houston and the International Space Station Flight Control Room here at the Johnson Space Center. It's a full house aboard the International Space Station with 11 crew members representing eight nations in support of the Axiom 3 mission. But the focus of attention today is the Falcon 9 launch of the SS Patricia Hilliard Robertson Cygnus cargo craft, Northrop Grumman's resupply vehicle that is poised to deliver four tons of science and supplies to the outpost. Now, a launch today for Cygnus will bring the spacecraft to the station in the wee hours Thursday, where NASA astronauts Jasmine Mogbelli and Laurel O'Hara will be poised in the cupola at the robotics workstation, ready to extend the Canadarm2 robotic arm to grapple Cygnus for its installation to the Earth-facing common berthing mechanism on the Unity module for a stay of about six months. Originally, Cygnus was to have spent four months on the station, but its stay has been extended to mid-July to accommodate stowage and potential reboost capability. So with you, Jesse, we're watching the countdown clocks ticking backward. Now back to you and Hawthorne. Awesome. Thanks, Rob. Falcon 9 is a reusable two-stage rocket designed and manufactured by SpaceX for the reliable and safe transport of people and payloads in Earth orbit and beyond. Today marks SpaceX's 305th launch, and for those of you following along, you'll know that about one-third of those launches were in 2023 alone and represent 80% of the world's total mass to orbit. We are currently launching about every three days and are looking to launch up to 150 missions in 2024. And reusability is what makes this all possible. Starting from the bottom of the rocket, the first stage, also referred to as the booster, makes up over 60% of the entire length of the Falcon 9 vehicle. It's also the part of the vehicle that gets reused over and over. In fact, the dark set that you see around the lower part of the first stage are remnants from its previous nine launches. This booster is a well-versed veteran launch vehicle and is set to return back to land again today. The white section above the black inner stage is the second stage. After the first and second stages separate about two and a half minutes into flight, the second stage will ignite its MBAC engine to carry the Cygnus spacecraft to orbit. Above the second stage is the payload fairing, which is the nose cone structure at the very top of the rocket. It protects the payload, and in this case, the Cygnus spacecraft, until we reach space. Around, the th around three minutes into flight, once we've exited Earth's atmosphere, we will jettison the fairing halves and attempt to retrieve them once they return back down to Earth. This payload fairing was customized to accommodate late load operations on the pad, and we'll talk more about these modifications a bit later in the program. For now, let's learn a bit more about the spacecraft itself. Rob? 
Thanks, Jesse. As mentioned earlier, Northrop Grumman's Cygnus cargo craft is about to deliver about four tons of science and supplies to the International Space Station, hitching a ride today for the first time on the venerable SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket. On the phone with us right now to discuss this unique marriage of rockets and resupply is a former veteran astronaut, Dan Tawney, who flew two supply and assembly missions to the International Space Station. He is now Northrop Grumman's program manager for human exploration and operations. Dan, it's been a while, but it's great to have you with us today. Rob, it's great to hear your voice and be uh, working with you again. Uh, thanks, thanks for the call. Our pleasure, Dan. Uh, from your experience on board the station a few years ago, what's involved in unloading a cache of cargo that a resupply vehicle b brings to the complex in what amounts to its own complex operation? <laughs> yeah, it is, it is a complex operation, and uh, from a crew member's point of view, boy, it's like Christmas. Uh, or nowadays, it's like watching the uh, Amazon truck show up and, and unload a bunch of stuff. Uh, you know, we're bringing 8,000 pounds, over 8,000 pounds of stuff to the crew, and uh, and not only is it, uh, you know, the scientific experiments and uh, stuff that the space station itself needs, but it's food, it's clothes, and uh, really, personally, to the crew, it's uh, notes and mementos and stuff from their families and friends. Uh, it's, it's great to put a little personal stuff in there. So it's an exciting day to receive a new cargo ship, and, uh, but, boy, they've got a lot of uh, hours ahead on unloading everything, putting it someplace in the station, and then uh, and filling it back up with uh, trash. And Dan, uh, this Cygnus is named after astronaut Patty Hilliard Robertson, a good friend of yours, who tragically lost her life in a plane crash uh, in 2001. You knew her very well. So on this day, a special day for you, your thoughts about her and the fact that Cygnus is named in her memory. Yeah, you know, one of the things we've uh, done on Cygnus from their very first mission is name them after space uh, pioneers, people that are very important to the human space program. and. Uh, uh, this is very personal for many of us. Uh, you know, in my class, we've been able to name a Cygnus for Pierce Sellers, and, and Laurel Clark was the last one. And uh, in this one, we get to honor uh, Patty, Patty Robertson. Uh, yeah, you know, we, she was in the class of 98. We were in the class of uh, 96, so we were sort of the sophomores to her, to her freshman class. And so we got the honor of, of uh, being with those guys when they were getting ready for their first T-38 flight and their first sim and their first uh, NBL run. And so got to know them very well. Patty, you know, she lit up a room. She was so wonderful to work with. She was, her attitude was great. She was smiling. You know, everybody loved her. And it's so, such a tragedy uh, when we lost her. So it is certainly uh, my pleasure and my honor uh, to be part of uh, the Cygnus team that gets to uh, honor Patty and her memory and get her uh, into space uh, sort of officially uh, or get her namesake into uh, space. So it's really a fantastic honor uh, and a pleasure for us to be able to do that. Dan, thank you so much for your time today. Appreciate your thoughts and good luck today. Dan Tawney, Northrop Grumman's Program Manager for Human Exploration and Operations. With that, Jesse, back to you in Hawthorne. In order to support Cygnus missions, SpaceX designed a custom fairing and payload transfer truck with a mobile clean room to support late load operations, which happen while the rocket is horizontal and on the pad deck. Late load refers to loading cargo in the final hours before launch and after the spacecraft has already been encapsulated inside the fairing. The fairing modifications includes a new roughly five foot by four foot fairing door that opens directly into the mobile clean room. At T minus 24 hours, late load ops began. Tex removed the door and opened Cygnus's forward hatch to load time sensitive cargo right on the pad. And then at T minus seven hours, Falcon 9 went vertical. Now with T minus eight minutes to go, all is looking good for an on time liftoff today. Again, the payload and, fair and vehicle are healthy. The range is ready to support, and weather looks amazing over there in Florida. For now, let's head back to Rob for a closer look at the science on today's mission. Rob? Jesse, thanks. We're at T-minus uh, 7 minutes, 30 seconds, and counting to the launch of the Falcon 9 rocket and the Northrop Grumman Cygnus cargo craft, which, as we said, is delivering about four tons of science and supplies to the space station. You know, science for every crew that lives and works on board the station is the main objective of activities up on orbit. Today's delivery is designed to improve robotic surgeries on Earth, 
3D printing techniques, and the growth of cartilage and microgravity. So let's take a quick look at the science aboard Cygnus. It's T minus six minutes and five seconds and the SpaceX team is working no significant issues. Weather is go, range remains go for launch. And at this point, RP-1 fuel is completely loaded on the second stage and nearly complete on first stage. Liquid oxygen loading is underway on both stages and will complete at T minus two minutes to launch. We're also loading helium gas into both stages. Falcon 9 uses helium as a pressurant to backfill the propellant tanks as liquid oxygen and RP-1 are consumed by the Berlin engines during ascent. Helium load began before the broadcast went live and will continue to top off until a minute and a half before launch. Jesse, to make sure engine startup goes well, SpaceX performed what is called engine chill, where a small amount of the super chilled liquid oxygen flowed into the Merlin engine's turbo pumps. This was done to avoid a thermal shock to the propulsion system when the full flow of super chill liquid oxygen is introduced into the Falcon 9 plumbing. Cygnus is also undergoing final vehicle health checks at this moment as it prepares to go on forward. internal battery check. power, all of that being monitored by Northrop Grumman flight controllers in Dulles, Virginia. Now the next event coming up will be the transporter erector retracting away from the vehicle. Now the transporter erector or the TE is that large stru structural structure next to Falcon 9, which you can see there on your screen. There are some clamp arms that are around the second stage just below the fairing. Those will open up first and once they are fully open, then the Start TE then the TE can recline away from the vehicle. And we did hear a call out that strong back retract is starting now. And it's a bit slow and slight, but you can see on your screen those clamp arms that I mentioned just below the fairing there are opening up. Again, in these last few minutes, Falcon 9 is perform performing final health checks on its primary communications, avionics, and propulsion systems in preparation for flight. And it looks like the clamp arms are now fully open and it's very slow and slight, but you can see the TE slowly moving away from the vehicle. And that should conclude the TE retraction. Now we may hear some call outs that engines are also sufficiently chilled as we get a little closer to liftoff. We're coming up on the uh, T minus three minute mark until launch. Checkouts of the second stage thrust vector control actuators will soon begin. This is referred to as an engine gimbal or wiggle test when SpaceX moves the nozzles ever so slightly to make sure that the guidance hardware is acceptable for flight. SpaceX does the same checkouts on the first stage engines. That happens just a few seconds before engine ignition. By the way, at the time of launch, the International Space Station will be flying some 260 statute miles over the South Pacific, southeast of New Zealand. The next milestone coming up will be propellant loading completion on the vehicle. At T minus three minutes, we wrapped up liquid oxygen loading on the first stage vehicle. And coming up next will be liquid oxygen loading completion on the second stage. Once, once that happens, Falcon 9 will be fully loaded with 1 million pounds of kerosene fuel and liquid oxygen. 
Cygnus is also performing its final health checks to make sure that all of its primary systems are ready for its rendezvous with the space station. Just waiting for the second stage liquid oxygen loading fallout. Stage two, lock flow complete. And there it is. That concludes propellant loading on Falcon 9. Now that this is complete, we will begin to vent out, and you can see it there on your screen, the liquid oxygen line on the transporter erector. Ground gas close out. Falcon 9 is in startup. There's the call, Falcon 9 in startup. Cygnus now transitioning to internal power. The Falcon 9 computers are in final pre-launch checks. That instructs the rocket through the last seconds before liftoff. Falcon Cygnus, Both stages 20, now being launch. pressurized for launch. The range remains go for launch. A pristine day for a launch from the Space Coast. T-minus 40 seconds and counting. Thirty seconds. Fifteen seconds. T minus ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two. One, ignition, invisible power, and lift off. Go Cygnus, go Falcon. Falcon 9 and Cygnus begin their flight, taking aim on the International Space Station. Pitch and roll program are in. Falcon 9, parking out to the northeast. Come with me here, pressure from it. T plus 40 seconds, Falcon 9 has successfully lifted off from Space Launch Complex 40. Telemetry nominal. This is our 10th mission of the year and second to the International Space Station. And we've throttled down our engines in preparation for Max-Q, which is coming up here in a few seconds. This is the largest structural vehicle load. Supersonic. This is the largest structural load that the vehicle will see on ascent. Max Q. And great news, we've passed through Max Q and are throttling those engines back up. Next up will be five events in rapid succession. That will be main engine cutoff, stage separation, second engine start or SES-1, the boost back burn startup on the first stage and fairing separation. Main engine cutoff or what we call MECO is where all nine M1D engines on the Falcon 9 first stage will shut down. It's all those engines that you see there on your screen. And this will be followed by stage separation or the separation of the first and second stages. A few seconds later, the Merlin vacuum engine on the second stage will ignite to boost Cygnus to low earth orbit, which is also known as SES-1. Then Falcon 9's first stage will ignite again to orient itself to head back to land with the boost back burn. Shortly thereafter, the fairing halves will separate and expose the spacecraft to the vacuum of space. Again, those five events coming up in a few seconds. Miko stage separation, SES-1, the boost back burn starting up as well as fairing separation. Miko. Stage separation confirmed. And back ignition. Stage one boost back startup. And there we've had Miko stage separation. The M back engine on the second stage ignited, as well as the boost back burn starting up on the first stage vehicle. 
and some awesome views there on your screen on your left hand side is a view of from the first stage on your right hand side a view from the second stage Bearing separation confirmed. And excellent news. We were able to see and hear the call out for confirmation of fairing separation. You can actually see one of the fairing halves falling back to earth on your right hand screen. Stage one boost back shut down. And we heard that call out and you can see on your left hand screen that the engines on the first stage vehicle have shut down and that concludes the boost back burn for the first stage vehicle. You can also see that the grid fins are now deploying on the first stage. Both vehicles are following nominal trajectory. And great call outs that both vehicles are on nominal trajectories. Some awesome views on your screen. Again, on your left-hand side is a view from the first stage. On your right-hand side is a view from the second stage looking at our MVAC engine. You're watching a live webcast for NG20, Northrop Grumman's 20th resupply mission to the orbiting laboratory. This is SpaceX's 10th mission for 2024 and the second flight to the International Space Station just this year. You might be interested to know in order to get to space, the rocket has to do more than just go up. It also has to go sideways and really, really fast. At liftoff, gravity is pulling straight down on the vehicle. As we ascend, we tilt the engines and the technical term for that is called gimbling. And that turns the rocket horizontally. Now we are still going up, but we are now also heading horizontally away from the launch pad. And that's what we call a gravity turn. An object typically needs to go 7.5 kilometers per second or 17,500 miles per hour horizontally in order to avoid being pulled back down to Earth and get into orbit. And that is exactly what this vehicle just performed. And on your left hand side again is the first stage making its way back down to Earth. Today, we do have a land landing, so we do require three burns in order for it to make its way back to its landing zone. We've already completed the boost back burn for the vehicle as it oriented itself heading back towards land. Next up will be the entry burn, and that's where three of the Merlin engines will reignite. This helps to slow the vehicle down as it re-enters the upper parts of the Earth's atmosphere. And then we'll be followed by the last burn, which is the landing burn. That's a single engine burn that begins that brings the vehicle speed down rapidly in order to touch down back on Earth. And a really cool view of that first stage vehicle from our ground tracking camera. That looks amazing. <laughs> and that entry burn is coming up here in just about 30 seconds or so. Views look amazing today. Again, you can see on your left hand screen the view of Earth in the background of the first stage as it's coming back down to Earth to land on our landing zone. Right hand screen again is of the second stage looking aft at our MVAC engine. Stage one, entry burn startup. We just heard that call out and you can see on your left-hand screen that the engines on the first stage vehicle have reignited. It's just about a 17 second burn. Stage one, entry burn shut down. And stage an awesome, one, FTS has saved. Awesome tracking view of our first stage vehicle. As you can see that the entry burn has concluded And the first stage vehicle continues to make its way back down to Earth. Both vehicles continuing on a nominal trajectory. And this is an incredible view that we are getting of the first stage vehicle heading back to land. Right now it's using its four grid fins to guide. Stage one transonic. To guide the vehicle during its descent. 
And this is amazing. You can see those four grid fins deployed. What a view that Big we have. Landing burn. <laughs> and you can see that the landing burn has begun for the vehicle. Let's watch as Falcon 9 touches back down on land. Stage two FDS has saved. Stage one landing leg deploy. Stage one landing confirmed. What a sight to see. Falcon has touched down. This booster just completed its 10th flight and the 268th successful landing of an orbital class rocket, including both Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy boosters. That was such, an, such an incredible view to watch. Now, next up is Seco for the second stage. That's where we will shut down this MVAC engine. Nominal orbit insertion. And great news, we heard that call out for Seco 1 as well as confirmation of good orbit. At T plus nine minutes and 15 seconds into the mission, the second stage has one last major task, commanding separation of the Cygnus spacecraft just a few minutes from now. For those of you just tuning in, you're watching a live webcast for NG-20, Northrop Grumman's 20th resupply mission to the International Space Station. This is SpaceX's 10th mission for 2024 and second flight to the International Space Station this year. And for those of you following along, you'll know that Cygnus will be joining two SpaceX Dragon spacecraft that are already docked at station as part of the Crew-7 and Axiom-3 missions. Crew-7 docked with the space station in August of last year, and Axiom-3 arrived earlier this month on January 20th. We are getting some incredible views. Again, what you're seeing on your screen is a view from the second stage looking aft at our MVAC engine. And you can see today that we are flying a shorter nozzle. And there you can see that shorter nozzle there on your screen. Both Northrop Grumman and SpaceX have a long history of supporting the International Space Station with cargo missions like today's. SpaceX's first commercial resupply services or CRS mission, CRS-1, launched in 2012 and made history by restoring America's capability to deliver and return cargo to the station. The Cygnus spacecraft has been visiting the International Space Station since 2013, and the first Cygnus CRS mission, Orb-1, launched in 2014. Cygnus has delivered more than 138,000 pounds of equipment, science experiments, and supplies to sustain the International Space Station's astronauts under NASA's Commercial Resupply Services contract. The most recent cargo resupply mission was SpaceX's CRS-29, and that was at the end of 2023 delivering more than 6,500 pounds of scientific research, crew supplies, and hardware to the orbiting laboratory. And today, Dragon is the only spacecraft currently flying that is capable of returning significant amounts of cargo back down to Earth. The CRS partnership has helped build a strong American commercial space industry that will soon take us to destinations beyond low Earth orbit. Now, in fact, these missions provide critical learnings that will help us develop a human presence on the moon and Mars, which will require a steady supply of cargo missions to grow and thrive. Again, if you're just now tuning in, we've had an on-time liftoff from Cape Canaveral at 12.07 p.m. Eastern time. We had, the, we had a good stage separation. Falcon 9's first stage returned back to land and touched down for landing. Now, right now, what you're seeing on your screen is a view from the second stage vehicle looking after our MVAC engine, but the Cygnus spacecraft is still attached. And we are just waiting for Cygnus separation from the second stage in just about a couple minutes from now.
Again, getting some awesome views here. And you can see that the vehicle is coasting on your bottom right hand corner of your screen. You can see the speed as well as the altitude of the vehicle with the payload attached. As a reminder, this is the first SpaceX launch of Cygnus this year. Cygnus refers to the constellation that is visible in the northern night sky. It's the company's tradition to name each Cygnus spacecraft in honor of an individual who has made substantial contributions to human spaceflight. Northrop Grumman named the NG-20 Cygnus spacecraft in remembrance and celebration of the life of NASA astronaut Dr. Patricia Patty Hilliard Robertson. Following separation, Cygnus will have a nearly 40-hour transit to the space station where the station's Canada Arm 2 will grapple Cygnus and the spacecraft will attach to the Unity module's Earth-facing port for cargo unloading by the Expedition 70 crew. If you're just now joining us, you are watching the NG-20 mission carrying the Cygnus spacecraft, currently attached to our Falcon 9 second stage, awaiting separation in just about under 30 seconds from now. That view that you see there on your screen is looking forward at the payload. And separation coming up here in a few Cygnus seconds. deploy confirmed. And an incredible view. You can see the Cygnus spacecraft drifting away from Falcon 9's second stage, confirming successful spacecraft separation. The Cygnus spacecraft is now on its way to the International Space Station, expected to arrive in just under 40 hours at 3.20 a.m. Central Time. And that's going to wrap it up for me here in Hawthorne. Be sure to check out SpaceX.com slash launches for a schedule of our upcoming missions. In the meantime, Rob, what's next for Cygnus? Jesse, thanks very much. Great ride uh, into orbit for Cygnus, and I must tell you that the flight controllers here in the International Space Station flight control room were simply mesmerized by that great video of the first stage landing uh, following uh, its job to deliver Cygnus uh, on its way to orbit. Joining me now on the phone here in uh, Mission Control in Houston is Jeff Arend, the manager for the Systems and Integration Office for the International Space Station program. Jeff, welcome in with us today. Yeah, Rob, thanks for having me. Yeah, it's always good to talk with you. Jeff, uh, a pretty significant day. How significant for the program was today's launch as SpaceX and Northrop Grumman collaborated to send Cygnus on its way to the station? Yeah, I guess I'd start by, uh, by kind of echoing what you just said, that, that both of our commercial partners, both for cargo and science delivery, as you said, Northrop Grumman and SpaceX, you know, they've each done an amazing job in all aspects of of the service that they provide ISS. And um, and as you kind of alluded to, they've, they've stepped up their game even more this time around with the uh, basically a seamless arrangement to launch Cygnus for the first time on a, on a Falcon 9. Um, so yeah, I can't, can't say enough there. Um, and as you know, the plan going forward is to continue this arrangement for at least a couple more Cygnus flights. Um, and given the overall importance of cargo and science to our mission, you know, the significance of this partnership can't be emphasized enough. It's, it's really hats off to these guys. Jeff, if you would, uh, pretty busy up on the station, 11 crew members, eight nations being represented in the midst of Axiom 3. So over the next 48 hours, outline for us the upcoming activities for the crew on board as they prepare for Cygnus's arrival Thursday. Yeah, happy to. Um, I'm actually going to start... I'm going to start a little bit earlier because um, it's good to remind folks that uh, because this is a, 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 a vehicle that we capture with the SSRMS, there is some, some study time and training time that the onboard crew goes through um, actually in the week leading up to this event. So Laurel and JAWS have been doing some work together, and they actually get some hands-on activity with the actual arm. We actually 
back away from a grapple fixture and, and then reapproach the grapple fixture similar to what they'll do for a capture. So they get a feel for how the arm actually performs in orbit. Um, they also have to do a little house, clean, house cleaning. There's, um, you know, the port that Cygnus is going to usually has stowage in front of it. So they need to clear the port both for hatch opening and, uh, and entering the Cygnus. Um, and the other thing that that, that serves for is uh, we install a camera an alignment camera that the crew will then check out, and uh, it actually looks out the node one hatch window, and that helps the, the ground team to actually, uh, with their alignment, when they actually berth the uh, Cygnus to node one nadir. And then the final thing is uh, um, tomorrow morning, actually before before the actual um, Cygnus comes to station, they'll They'll set up the robotics workstation that they use. They use that for monitoring Cygnus as, I, as it approaches ISS. Um, they use it to ensure that, that the vehicle stays within the, the expected corridor and remains safe. Um, and then, of course, they perform the capture op operations of Cygnus uh, when it gets to what we call um, its capture point. So, um, yeah, they got, a lot of, they got a lot on their plate, but it starts even before the week before the actual launch of the vehicle. Jeff, thanks very much. We appreciate your time today, as always. Yep, thank you, Rob, appreciate it. Jeff Aaron, the manager for the Systems and Integration Office for the International Space Station. Next up will be the deployment of Cygnus's solar arrays scheduled to begin around an hour and 40 minutes from now. That critical milestone will take about 30 minutes to complete. And once the arrays are deployed, we'll provide an update on the station blog with the latest news. From this point on, Northrop Grumman flight controllers at their Mission Operations Center in Dulles, Virginia, will be monitoring Cygnus's flight to the International Space Station, along with flight controllers here in Houston. They'll work in tandem early Thursday as Cygnus arrives in the neighborhood of the orbital outpost. With that, we're going to wrap up our coverage of the launch of Northrop Grumman's 20th Commercial Resupply Services mission. Cygnus now on course to be captured at about 3.20 a.m. Central Time, 4.20 a.m. Eastern Time, Thursday morning. Live coverage of rendezvous and capture will begin at 1.45 a.m. Central Time, 2.45 a.m. Eastern Time, followed by coverage of Cygnus's installation to the station at 4.45 a.m. Central, 5.45 a.m. Eastern Time. In the meantime, you can learn even more about this mission on the web at nasa.gov slash commercial resupply. So on behalf of my colleague Jesse Anderson of SpaceX and Hawthorne and our colleagues at Northrop Grumman, thank you for joining us today. We'll see you back here early Thursday morning. This is Mission Control Houston. <laughs>